Welcome back to the Happy Heart Academy podcast. I am your host, Tyler Stratton, and today we are talking about the three critical steps that you can begin to take to get over your wrecks. And it's in these three critical steps that I believe that you're going to have to take, that everyone absolutely has to take in order to walk back toward their happiness rather than their hurt. So if that's something that you want to try to do, if you're trying to move on and let go of your ex, this is the three steps that I think are vital that everyone has to walk through to get back toward or at least closer toward their happiness rather than their heartbreak. So I hope you find this episode helpful, encouraging, supportive, and or uplifting. And if you are going through a difficult time in your life and dealing with uh, heartbreak or trying to rediscover who you are or rebuild yourself back up after a low point, maybe you're feeling a little depressed, maybe you're feeling a little upset, maybe you're not feeling so purposeful, well, come over and join the Happy Heart Academy where we talk about all of these different types of topics that ultimately help you rebuild yourself so that you can live more joyfully from your heart rather than your hurt. And like always, guys, today's episode is going to be about some practical understanding and practical ways in which you can begin to continue to walk your uh, own journey back toward happiness after your heartbreak so that you can feel more empowered and inspired in life so that you don't feel so dead and, and dreadful after you lose your ex. Now, many of the times um, when we go through a heartbreak, we experience a crazy amount of emotional pain a crazy amount of emotional pain that stops us dead in our tracks. And a lot of us allow our emotions to control us. A lot of us allow our emotions to stop us from doing and pursuing a better quality of life because this hurt feeling and these hurt emotions make us want to just dwell up and just lay in bed and not progress and move forward. It's like, how can we move forward without our significant other? How can we move forward without having a purpose or an identity or a sense of well-being, love, security, and all the things that a relationship can bring? Well, realistically, what we're going to be talking about today are three ways in which you can begin to finally stop thinking of your ex and move on. So the first big idea that I have for you today is you have to want to heal and stop wanting them back. Write that down. Like, I know you're probably like, well, duh. Well, yeah, well, duh. Then why haven't you, right? It's like you have to make sure that you start to want to actually have this healing take place, and you're going to want to have to stop wanting them back. You're going to have to see this. Now, it's important for you to understand and realize that when I sit down and coach people one-on-one, the first question I usually ask them, because many people come to me and ask this simple question, Tyler, how do I move on? How do I move on when I love someone is the big question. And realistically, the first question that I ask back, I answer that question usually with a question. Some people don't like that. Uh, but ultimately, I answer that question with this question. Do you even want to move on? Do you even want to heal? Do you, Or would you rather stay in this hurt so that you still have some type of attachment to your ex? Sometimes our hurt emotions are will stay with us only simply because it's what brings us close to our ex. Now, this isn't the ideal way to heal. Holding on to our hurt past pains um, make us feel like we're still a part of our ex's life is not an ideal way to live and or heal. But you have to take the initiative to actually want to heal. Like you are going to want to have a better life. And more importantly, you're going to have to have a want a better life without them. You're going to have to create, you've created that life with them and you're going to have to do the exact same thing, but without them, you've already created a life with somebody. Now it's time to focus on creating a better life without somebody. There's such a beautiful thing that takes place during a breakup. There's, there's this cross uh, crossroads that everyone can take. You can either go walk toward your breakdown or walk toward your breakthrough. And ideally here at the happy heart Academy, we help you walk toward your breakthrough so that you can create independence and happiness and reclaim your personal power so that you can feel so much more purposeful and create a new identity that's not wrapped up into one thing. We teach you how to diversify your happiness uh, portfolio rather than centering your happiness only on one thing. And most of that thing is one person. And unfortunately, whether they leave you because of they found someone new or because they cheated or because they passed away, people are not the greatest thing to invest in at times, especially putting all your eggs in one basket. So we know financially that putting our eggs all in one basket doesn't make sense to do. We are in a high risk portfolio. Well, the same thing is true when it comes to our happiness portfolio. When it comes to our happiness portfolio, 
we have to learn how to diversify our happiness portfolio so that our identity is not attached into one person or one thing. Because if that one person leaves, we leave with it. And then we feel completely broken, lost, alone, feeling crippled. And ideally, when we learn how to diversify our happiness portfolio, what begins to take place is our identity is found in those multiple different locations. And when one um, asset might fall away, like a relationship, we don't lose entirely everything we are. Yes, we have lost a big part of our asset portfolio or our, our, our significant other. Well, that doesn't mean our life is over. So I want to help you move on from feeling like your life is over to feeling like you have your reclaimed your personal power. And in order to do that, you have to want to begin your healing process. And you're going to have to stop wanting them back. Now, how do you start uh, this idea of stop wanting stop wanting them back? Well, you do so by understanding that um, when, when you when you stop the, the the idea of wanting them back, you have to point out some different ways in which they were not good for you. And when you point out these different ways in which they're not good for you, you'll start to see, oh, like I remember getting out of some relationships that I had with ex-partners throughout high school and different things like that. Um, and even heck, middle school. I remember I had like love goggles on her. I was only seeing what I wanted to see. Love is blind. You've probably heard that before, like love blinds you. Um, and it doesn't make you see everything that other people see, right? And ideally, when you begin to take off your goggles, your love goggles, and you see the person for who they really are and not for who you created them to be, your, your understanding or your willingness to want them will start to dwindle because there's so many imperfections in humans, including in myself and my partner and everybody. But when we have love, we disregard those problems and try our best to ignore those things and forget about those things and we stay in love with them because we like this feeling of love. So what I need you to do if you want to stop wanting your ex, you really need to begin to focus in more on this idea of like figuring out why they weren't good for you. Start pointing out the problems. Start being a little judgmental toward them. Like what didn't you like about them? What didn't you want them to, how, the, how did they act or what didn't they do? Like what caused a nuisance and annoyances and, and problems in your relationship with them? Because clearly if you guys are broken up and apart, there were problems. So ideally, if you want to stop wanting them, you've got to point out the reasons why they're no longer good for you. So that's number one. You have to want to heal and, you and stop wanting them back. Number two is you must accept that this breakup or divorce took place. You must accept that this breakup or divorce happened. You can't keep living in denial or in some type of false reality that doesn't exist at this time. When it comes to getting back together with your ex, hoping things will be different is positioning yourself to lose. This is because your hope is ideally attached to your ex and nothing other than them. That is why you must begin to accept that this breakup happened or this divorce took place is because when you live in denial, what you deny, you cannot accept and what you cannot accept, you cannot heal. Healing only begins to take place the moment that you begin to accept it. That's where the real work begins to take place is when you begin to accept that this breakup happened. When you live in denial, what you're doing is you're, 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 Denial is part of the uh, grieving stages, it's part of the seven grieving stages that I talk about. Actually, I have a free one hour video training session on the seven stages of heartbreak that you'll have to walk through in order to create happiness in return. Check it out over the Happy Heart Academy. Um, you can find it at the community.happyheartacademy.com. It's a free one hour training that I gave away. Um, it came from my VIP training sessions um, and weekly coaching program. Once again, it's a very impactful, powerful, knowledgeable piece of information so that you know how to navigate your heartbreak. But one of the places that we started with is denial. And that's stage number two. Stage number two is denial after stage number one, which is shock. So when we're in the denial phase, what usually happens is we deny that we've actually lost our partner. We pretend like it's actually not over and we, we do everything in our power to make it so. Um, and many people have different ways in which they make it so. But one of the biggest things that, you, that, that people do uh, that stops them from being able to heal their hearts hurt as they live in denial and they numb in denial, they get to numb their pain. They no longer have to deal with their pain. They no longer have to deal with the emotional overwhelming um, emotions that uh, heartbreak brings. And uh, so when you live in denial, you can't accept. And when you can't accept, you can't heal. And when you can't, when you can't accept, you can't move on. 
So when you begin to just fully acknowledge like, okay, this is it. Like, I think that was one of the biggest breaking points of my own personal uh, journey from heartbreak back to happiness was the moment that I accepted, like, I can't do this anymore. This is exhausting. This is just, this is just unreal. Like if this is what relationships are about, I never want to be in one again, because this is absolutely horrible. Um, I didn't have a fun time being in the relationship or trying to hold on to something that didn't want to be held on to trying to hug something that didn't want to be hugged, trying to love something that didn't want to be loved. It was absolutely exhausting. It's like, I gave it my all and I never felt good enough. And when I, uh, when my partner and I um, in high school broke up, it was devastating at the time, but a, a lot of my suffering came from the denial, the unacceptance of the reality. Like when I saw her with somebody else, I was like, well, that she's not supposed to be with them, obviously. Like, that's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Just these thoughts would, would come into place. And I know that you're dealing with those thoughts. And that's why I bring this up is because ultimately I understand where you're at. We all, we all experience, in my eyes, pain the same way. Um, and I can talk about that another time because I've gotten questions about, hey, Tyler, does, does women and men experience pain in the same way? And my and quick definition, pain is pain, love is love. Um, but the only difference is, is if the person, if you were the one broken up with, you're going to experience a longer amount of suffering than the person who broke you, broke up with you most of the time. Okay. So uh, we can maybe talk about that in another podcast episode, but ultimately you need to understand that you have to learn to accept this. Um, and once you learn to accept this, you'll begin to, um, you'll begin an important part of your recovery. You'll begin one of the most the biggest steps you can take because ultimately what is actually going to take place